men can actually talk about physical preferences if it's designed to validate average women. For example, a man saying he likes thick ladies, that sort of comment is celebrated by average women. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is one that is long overdue. We are talking about the 10 double standards that men hate in relationships. This is unfortunately a long list, guys. Like, I shouldn't be able to think of so many of these, but unfortunately, these are double standards that are really entwined within our culture. And I think that we see them quite frequently on social media. So today I want to do a countdown. I kind of organize them into what I think is the least worst <laughs> to the most worst. So starting with number 10, when women post revealing photos for attention, she's confident. But when a man interacts with those photos, he's cheating. Or at the very least, he's just not as loyal. Now, don't get my message confused on this one because me personally, I don't post revealing photos. And on the flip side of that, my man does not like to interact with those types of photos from other women. So I think that it's 100% okay if you don't want your man to interact with content like that. But you can't hold him accountable to that while you yourself are producing that kind of content. Because in most cases, that man values modesty. And if you two don't align on that value, that's going to cause conflict within the relationship. Number nine, physical abuse. Okay, it's okay for a woman to hit a man, but it's not okay for a man to hit a woman. I've seen this time and time again even in content on social media where a woman gets mad and she hits a man as a joke and the video will go viral and have millions of views because it's seen as funny, which I think is so messed up because we all know that video would be taken down and the account would be banned if the genders were reversed. But the fact that a woman hitting a man is so easily digested, it's just very telling that it is way more acceptable within relationships when it absolutely shouldn't be. And what's even more messed up is the stigma against men for speaking up against physical abuse that a woman has committed. And that's without even talking about how messed up the stigma is against men for speaking up against physical abuse that a woman has committed. Number eight, it's okay for a woman to sexually objectify a man, but it's not okay for a man to ob objectify a woman. Prime example of this, guys, is if you know the actor Henry Cavill, you know Superman, he's been objectified by not only fans, but also within professional interviews where the interviewer has focused in on his looks rather than his skills. Katie Couric even asked him in an interview, get this, she asked him if he was worried about his good looks getting in the way of his acting in terms of people taking him seriously for his craft rather than his packaging. I really think that if a male interviewer had asked an actress the same question, he would no longer have a job. Well, let me know if you agree or disagree. Number seven, a woman can do and say terrible things to a man and it's the man's fault for making her that upset. While if a man says the same things to a woman, it's emotional abuse. Well, guess what? It's emotional abuse either way. Number six, it's okay for women to talk about being attracted to someone else. For example, talking about how hot an actor is while watching a movie with her man right next to her. Yet if her man was talking about an actress in that way, uh, it would not be okay. Number five, being vulnerable as a man is weakness, while women being vulnerable is just the norm. This is something I've talked about a lot. A man is human and should absolutely have different emotions. I actually believe that if he's never been vulnerable, that it's because he doesn't feel safe enough to. And there's a lot of reasons for this, with one of the biggest ones being that when he has been vulnerable in the past, uh, it was used against him later on down the line to the point at which he was left regretting saying anything in the first place. Number four, if she cheats, 
he's blamed for not making her happy. And if he cheats, it's a character defect. Well, I will stand to argue that it's probably more the latter for either one of those, right? I think that cheating is terrible. Like, there's really never an excuse for it. But if you're somebody that truly believes that, like, it shouldn't be gender specific. You can't really believe that there's never a reason for a man to cheat. And then on the other hand, when you hear about one of your female friends cheating or you hear a video online where a woman is saying that she has cheated, and you can't go and comment or have a belief that, you know, maybe there's a reason why she cheated, right? And that's because of something that he did or he wasn't doing the things that he said that he would or he wasn't putting in the effort or he wasn't making her feel loved so it forced her into you know this position because we don't allow those same excuses for men and so it's just really backwards you either believe it or you don't it should not be gender specific number three men that verbalize physical preferences in a woman are misogynist <laughs> but only if it's preferences like he likes blonde, big boobs, butt, or skinny. The caveat here is that men can actually talk about physical preferences if it's designed to validate average women. For example, a man saying he likes thick ladies, that sort of comment is celebrated by average women. And the big example, the real life example that comes to mind when it comes to this is the comedian Matt Reif. If you guys know who he is, he exploded on TikTok um, maybe less than a year ago. And then he went viral with this clip of him in a podcast being asked, what is his type? And he responded, blonde, big boobs. And women went crazy after him. They did not like that response, but I'm telling you, if it was a woman giving that same response, like, oh, she was saying that she likes tall, dark, six pack of abs, six inches long, like all of that is so widely accepted. So for him just to say like two things that a lot of average women just, they knew they couldn't live up to and they were already like in love with this guy because he's very funny and you know, he's young and has good looks like it's just wild that they got so triggered by him but again i think it's telling it, it tells us that there is a double standard here that men can't verbalize these physical preferences like women can women can talk freely about their physical preferences number two men that set a relationship boundary are controlling or insecure but women that set boundaries are confident and know their value for example if a man doesn't like it when his woman posts a half naked picture on Instagram and he talks to her about that and talks about why he wants to set that as a boundary and why he wants her to change her actions. Um, he is seen as controlling when the truth is, is that he finds it embarrassing, honestly, that his lady is feeling the need to seek attention in that way. Meanwhile, a woman can ask all day long for her man to unfollow certain accounts that make her feel uncomfortable. All right, lastly, guys, this is very similar to one that I already talked about, but it's a little bit more specific. So I had to save it because I think that it really is the most important one because it highlights how I think a lot of women think men are different and they kind of take them as not humans and humans have um, emotions they have a spectrum of emotions and I want women to understand that so leading into number one women that cry are emotional but men that cry are weak this is just such an outdated belief and extremely toxic for men so that's really all I can say about that one. Let me know, guys, in the comments, any double standards that you highly, highly dislike or that you've experienced. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these, and I will see you next week.